December 13th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jonah chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. The Lord said to Jonah, son of Amittai, Go immediately to Nineveh, that large capital city, and announce judgment against its people, because their wickedness has come to my attention. Instead, Jonah immediately headed off to Tarshish to escape from the commission of the Lord. He traveled to Joppa and found a merchant ship heading to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went aboard it to go with them to Tarshish, far away from the Lord. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind on the sea. Such a violent tempest arose on the sea that the ship threatened to break up. The sailors were so afraid that each cried out to his own God, and they flung the ship's cargo overboard to make the ship lighter. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold below deck, had lain down, and was sound asleep. The ship's captain approached him and said, What are you doing asleep? Get up! Cry out to your God! Perhaps your God might take notice of us so that we might not die. The sailors said to one another, Come on, let's cast lots to find out whose fault it is that this disaster has overtaken us. So they cast lots, and Jonah was singled out. They said to him, Tell us whose fault it is that this disaster has overtaken us. What's your occupation? Where do you come from? What's your country, and who are your people? He said to them, I am Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Hearing this, the men became even more afraid and said to him, What have you done? The men said this because they knew that he was trying to escape from the Lord, because he had previously told them. Because the storm was growing worse and worse, they said to him, What should we do to make the sea calm down for us? He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea to make the sea quiet down, because I know it's my fault you were in this severe storm. Instead, they tried to row back to land, but they were not able to do so because the storm kept growing worse and worse. So they cried out to the Lord, Oh, please, Lord, don't let us die on account of this man. Don't hold us guilty of shedding innocent blood. After all, you, Lord, have done just as you pleased. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped raging. The men feared the Lord greatly and earnestly vowed to offer lavish sacrifices to the Lord. The Lord sent a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the stomach of the fish and said, I called out to the Lord for my distress, and he answered me. From the belly of Sheol I cried out for help, and you heard my prayer. You threw me into the deep waters, into the middle of the sea. The ocean current engulfed me. All the mighty waves you sent swept over me. I thought I had been banished from your sight, that I would never again see your holy temple. Water engulfed me up to my neck. The deep ocean surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. I went down to the very bottom of the mountains. The gates of the nether world barred me in forever. But you brought me up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I called out to the Lord, and my prayer came to your holy temple. Those who worship worthless idols forfeit the mercy that could be theirs. But as for me, I promise to offer a sacrifice to you with public declaration of praise. I will surely do what I have promised. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Then the Lord commanded the fish, and it disgorged Jonah on dry land. God, my favorite part of Jonah, at least this first half of Jonah, is he is in the middle of a whale or a big fish, depends on which version you got in Sunday school, in be, having been swallowed by a big fish. And he thanks and praises you for doing that. You know, so often we get ourselves into situations where we're just like Jonah. And instead of going to Nineveh, we head exactly the opposite direction and go to Tarshish. We know exactly what we're supposed to be doing, how we're supposed to be obedient, who we're supposed to talk to, what we're supposed to do, what we're not supposed to do. And yet we do exactly the opposite. 
And I truly believe that Jonah is just this amazing, compassionate love story about how truly and deeply you love us. That you work so hard at teaching us discipline and obedience all out of this amazing love that you have for us. It is crazy. So here's Jonah in the middle of a big fish, thanking and praising you for allowing the fish to swallow him, thanking and praising you that you allowed those people to throw him into the waters, thanking and praising you. God, help us to learn when to thank and praise you, not just in the good times and not just in the times that we understand. The Bible says we are to rejoice always, not just when we're pleased, not just when things go our way, but always. This situation that we might be in might be saving us from something far worse. What if Jonah was just left to die in the stormy sea? But no, you sent a fish to swallow him up. Again, we have all these kind of landing pads that you provide for us. And sometimes we don't see them as these amazing landing pads that again, help us get out of these situations. We see them, oh, as all sorts of different things. As you punishing us, as you uh, making things difficult for us, as bad things happening to us. We like to, well, at least me, I like to whine a lot. <laughs> Woe is me. But they're not. They're these amazing like cushions, safety cushions that you allow us to safely land on or in this case end up in the in the belly of a fish so that we can eventually be obedient to you. And the whole reason for the obedience is so that we can have the life that you want us to have. Your choice for our life is way better than our choices. And here you are working so hard at making sure that we're obedient to you just so you can give us a better life. Crazy. So that's what I love about Jonah is in the midst of all of this, he gets it. Whereas I usually don't. It usually takes me a few more notches down the belt before I understand. He gets it. He thanks and praises you for being swallowed up by a fish. God, next time I am swallowed up by a fish, it seems to happen almost every day because I seem to get myself in trouble all the time. Allow me to remember this story. Allow it to seep into my heart. So the next time I am swallowed by a fish, uh, that I will remember to praise and worship and glorify you for how attentive you are, how much you love me, how compassionate you are, how much mercy you have, and how sovereign you truly are that you would manipulate situations. And we're going to see a couple more in the next couple chapters. That you would manipulate and control situations to teach me what I need to know. That kind of love is very hard to understand, but I am trying to learn each and every day more and more about this endless pit of you, this incredible love that you have for us. God, I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.